Today, we're going to talk about Ripple and XRP, which make up most of cryptocurrency and money. So let's get right to it and start with a few things about the market. There was a Bitcoin worth $30,000 that we saw not long ago, and some coins have really stood out. There's a lot of great action in the altcoin market if we look at the last 24 hours, but a lot of this is still very new. Gatitude is what I'm really interested in right now, since Bitcoin just hit $30,000. What did I see all over Twitter? This is the scam I see. It's a scam. Bitcoin is going to drop all the way to 20k. I saw 15k calls and 10k calls as well. And it's really funny. I don't know how many of you were here at the time, but it makes me think of March 2020. Let's go back to that stretch of time. Here we are in March 2020, just before the big move. During this time, every move was met with the same reaction. Oh no, it's a scam or it's going to back off even more. A lot of people wanted sub 3k in March 2020. Then what do you think? The market said, let's just pump. An interesting thing about this is that a lot of people will stay out of it because they want to buy cheaper. Do this, do that, or just don't think now is the right time. I want everyone to know that some people felt bad that they didn't buy Bitcoin or even just all coins when they were under 20k. I think we'll see the same thing happen when we get close to 30k, but it won't be 20k. It will cost 30k. When the market is ready to wake up, it will move quickly. It's funny that no one is talking about how many people are upset about XRP when we've seen 100% plus lights in less than a day. It took hours, but because XRP went from less than 50 cents to almost a dollar so quickly, it looked like it happened overnight. People will be standing around hoping they were ready, that they were gathering, and that they had their bags packed as we look at this space, and as it wakes up and things start to move very quickly. Also, I want you all to know that I don't want any of you to miss this next run because it's likely to be the last uncontrolled bull run in this place. That's where the retail industry will make the most money. This is something I keep saying because I don't think people are really ready for what's going to happen. When the rules are put in place, this market will go away for good. I mean, there are a lot of crypto tokens with market caps of a billion dollars or more that don't do anything. You can't say, oh, just wait until we hit X amount of price right now as we take a good look at the space. As we head into the next four years of Bitcoin cycle, now is the time to get ready, pack your bags, and understand where we are in the market cycle. Does everyone love to talk about how Bitcoin cycles every four years? Okay, now is the time to study that in case we need to follow it again. However, it's also good to look at all the coins and decide that this one is the one you want to keep. Get your stocks ready for the next run up. I don't want anyone to not be ready. Now that we know that, let's get into some things. We just now learned from Paul Bear Network that he's using Elizabeth Warren's words here. She is running a campaign where she actually blames crypto for nuclear weapons. We do think it will be the same day as the embarrassing SEC give up. Here's Warren, who talks about how expensive nuclear weapons are and how we need to crack down on crypto to stop the spread of nuclear weapons. What the heck is wrong with these people and politicians? And by the way, Elizabeth Warren is good friends with both the banks and the government officials. If she wants to keep people from getting into crypto, I have no doubt that she's spreading some nonsense. She might be trying to get people to not think about crypto. I'm not sure what her general plan is, but she's very against crypto. As I already said, she's also very good friends with Brad Sherman. Brad Sherman has a bias toward banks. He said crypto bros print money out of thin air, but that's pretty much what the US government does. It's the US government. These are the kinds of people who want to launch this effort against crypto. Forbes said something different. Killing crypto is not a good way to fight crime. I really believe that their main goal is to keep regular people out of crypto or at least try to keep them out of crypto. These are the same people who are behind Operation Choke Point 2.0. That being said, I keep telling them that stopping technology won't be easy. Technology will keep getting better. Technology will stay around for a while longer. This space can't be stopped again like this. No matter how hard they try, we know that the technology in the area is very valuable. It's really groundbreaking. I also don't think that these leaders and regulators will really be able to stop crypto. Besides that, they also point out that she was pushing this plan in 2017 even though it hurt consumers. Another thing is that I never hear them talk about casinos or people who play the lottery, right? When you talk about customers getting hurt, you should talk about people who lose their homes because they gamble. There are also people who put all of their life savings into the stock market and lost it all in 2008. Where were they in 2008 when people said, hey, the stock market should be shut down? This is not what they say. They only say bad things about crypto. Cryptocurrency is very risky. I'm sorry. They talk about how cryptos are used for scams different things, and so on. The US dollar is never brought up. They never talk about how the US dollar works. They never talk about that. They only talk about how cryptos work like this and that. 
But they have to say this because of their bills, which is why they're trying to get it passed. She's saying that this Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act means that crypto has become the first choice for terrorists, ransomware, gangs, drug sellers, and rogue states that want to hide money. To get people to back their bills, they have to say and push these things. Their bill is to stop regular people from being able to buy and hold crypto. So let's take a closer look at this, all right? It seems like there is no real good in these people, and it's because they support Wall Street and bankers. They really like Wall Street, they like banks, and they want that person to be in charge of crypto. In other words, they don't want retail to be on their own. They do care about that public money because they can't send money overseas without it, right? Now that we know more about what's going on behind the scenes of crypto, I do believe that it will remain around for a while. I think that will only continue to do well. Thanks to 707 Crypto for this. It's a fact that lawmakers need to know they can't stop technology. Tom Heath, Tarber, chief legal officer for Circle and the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit were both thrown out. Look at this. The government needs to understand that technology can't be stopped. It's going to happen. It looks like a river. You can help it go in a different direction, but you can't stop it. For example, you can focus on making sure that consumers are safe, finances are stable, risks are dealt with, and many other legal goals are met. But it is very important for officials to be proactive instead of reactive. When it comes to giving the business direction, enforcement is not the same as making rules. Also, I think regulators need to know that the most important thing is to make sure that risks that are similar are controlled in the same way. That's why you ask the question. If the risks are pretty much the same between old and new finance, you should try to make sure they're treated the same so there isn't legal arbitrage. But I think the real key is making sure that as a regulator, you are not biased against new technologies and that you have clear goals for regulation. If you don't, you should let the business keep coming up with new ideas. That's all there is to it. Again, this makes me think of the comment we saw from Tim Draper. Yes, it was around 2021 if you know this. What makes me bring this up is that Anderson sent out a great tweet. And yes, I believe the SEC is now in the I guess it's happening phase. Once more, the SEC has been so badly beaten down. It looks like the SEC hasn't been seeing the big picture here. I believe they do that because they don't want to see the big picture. It looks like VG Crypt even replied to this. They knew the whole time it was going on. They've chosen to use our tax money to keep us from moving for as long as possible. It will happen because Gary told us how. That was his job before. Laugh aloud. I saw the cool show with a person from the city when you see it. For value transfers, she said the city used a secret permission ledger. She also said the city would try to use a public chain, but regulators don't let banks do that. The incumbents are being left out. For the second time, they are holding up this new system that will be based on crypto or blockchain and DLT. People who can see this idea and invest in its parts will become very rich and successful. However, this movie is what I spoke about with Tim Draper, correct? He's having a conversation with Gary Gensler around a campfire and is actually explaining what technology does. Thanks to Crypto Bullet for this. But pay close attention. A lot will have to change for them not to lose market share. Someone else will do better, faster, and serve their clients better than JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs. The bankers are already beginning to freak out. You can hear the fear in their words. Which type of business is most? Here's what always takes place. The first thing they do is say, oh, it's nothing. That's what they did. I mean, that's how it is with every new business and technology. It's nothing, say the people in charge, a status quo, and the people who hold power. Don't forget about the man behind the screen. This doesn't mean anything. Then all of a sudden it gets too big to fit. They're thinking, oh my God, I have to deal with this. Then they all stand in a line, cross their arms and say, we're not going to let this happen. After that, it keeps going. After that, they say, okay, let's go after. Let's take them to court. Let's go get the government instead. There's something else to do. They begin to use the technology. I plan to leave. That comes at the end. They are going to use this tech. They don't do anything else after this. No, it comes after the press plans. They set up the news stories. They filed claims. They make as much of a noise as they can. They try to get their friends and the government to help. Then they think, oh my God, this is happening. So that's it, right? A lot of people think this is the last part. And I don't really believe that, do you? It looks like we're getting ready for it. I think that last part will happen sometime in the next two or three years, if I had to be honest. And by then, it will be too late for the retail sector to play, right? And I think we can already see that, right? Let it be known that like a lot of these tokens, even XRP is too expensive for most people to keep 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, or any other amount. But I feel like we're getting close. I think that things are about to change a lot in terms of the space. I even think it's funny that people are still saying bad things about XRP. 
And a lot of it comes from Bitcoin Maxis, right? Take a look at this. Even if we only look at some of these stars like Ron Noon. Why are crypto fans happy that the SEC dropped the case against Ripple? It only means the SEC can file an appeal faster now. They used to have to wait until the case was over. But now they dropped the case so they can file an appeal right away. A lot of this story is being told on Twitter as well. I think something will happen with XRP in particular, since a lot of people like to connect Ripple and XRP because, once again, Ripple tapped in using XRP. I believe the same is true for the story behind the rules. In a way, this means that XRP is now safe for at least two years. As an example, we saw Fred Rispoli respond. He said, yes, you are correct if by immediately, you mean six to nine months earlier than before the SEC dropped the appeal, so an appeal ending in September 2025 instead of 2026. In response, Moon Lambeau said that the SEC had sent a document to Judge Torres that made it clear that they would not be appealing the ruling that XRP is not a security. You are completely wrong to think that the SEC being able to challenge sooner is bad. Also, it doesn't matter if the SEC appeals other parts of the case or if they win. That rolling would only apply to transactions that Ripple was a part of, not transactions on secondary markets. We already won, and that's another clear thing about XRP. A lot of the people in this space who are Bitcoin experts are in theory like bankers when it comes to crypto right now. They're afraid of XRP. The people in charge of traditional finance are afraid of what XRP could do. This is because regulations are starting to match the space and adoption is starting to match the space. What currency in this space has incredible utility in the traditional world of finance and what company has been showing that currency to major bankers and other traditional finance players for over a decade? That's why they're afraid of XRP. They know how powerful it is and don't want their favorite cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, to lose its top spot. But having said that, I do believe that some pretty big changes are about to happen in crypto. Next month is a big month, as I said, with ISO 28 to 2 and the CBT season and other things. Besides that, I hope you've been enjoying the channel.